Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take a closer look at the entire form of Ampere's law in differential form. Here it is, the curl of B is equal to mu sub naught times the current density, plus this additional term. This additional term says that it's mu sub naught times epsilon sub naught, of course that's permeability of free space, that's permittivity of free space, times the partial derivative with respect to time of the electric field. Whoa, where did that come from? Because so far, in most cases, all you worry about is that you have some sort of current flowing. You want to know what the, what the magnetic field is somewhere, either inside the region where the current is flowing or outside the region where the current is flowing. But you can also have a magnetic field produced by a changing electric field. And that was one of the great uh, contributions of Maxwell to realize that this term had to be added to this in order to have a complete equation right there. And so this here, this portion of the equation right here, also represents current density, but this is not regular current density because it's not current density because there's a current. There's current density or equivalent of current density because there's a changing electric field. And so this here is called the displacement curve, which basically it's, um, a, it's a current that appears to be there because of the changing electric field. Now to get a little bit more into that, let's see how we can um, set up an, um, an example where this would be the case. So let's say we have two capacitor plates right there. They're connected to a wire that allows current to flow to one of the plates and away from one of the plates right there. And so if there is charge on these plates, so if we indeed we have charges on these plates like this, and uh, let's make this uh, negative charges. If we have negative charges here, we have positive charges there. You can see that there's going to be an electric field in this direction, from positive to negative. And what Ampere's law is saying, or what Maxwell was saying, was if these charges change, if more charge comes onto the plates or less, or charges move away from the plate, the electric field is going to be changing between the plates. And if the electric field is changing at that time, you are going to have a magnetic field only during the time that the electric field is changing. If this is a static situation and there's no current flowing, then the B field would simply go away and this term simply would disappear. But if the field is changing because current is flowing onto the plate, like for example like this, so we have current flowing onto the plate and away from this plate, so the field is in this case increasing, then we would have a magnetic field that looks just like that. And we can imagine then we can find the strength of the field by simply using the same concept here. The curl of the B field should equal mu sub naught times the displacement current. So how do we calculate that displacement current? Well, we have to go back to some basics. First of all, assume that the, capac the capacitor plates are circular and that the area is pi r squared. Also realize that the capacitance of a capacitor is epsilon sub naught times the area of the plates divided by the distance between the plates. So here's the distance between the plates. And then going back to the concept of the electric field, let's say that here we have this capacitor on its side and we have electric field between the plates. And let's say that we place a small little test charge on one side of the capacitor on the negative side of the capacitor right there. And let's say that little test charge has charge equal to Q. How much work would it take to push that little charge all the way across to the other side? Well, we know that work is equal to force times distance. And the force on a small charge inside electric field is going to be uh, Q times E. So there, force times distance will be Q E times D. Now, if we divide the work by that test charge, that is then equal to the voltage between the plates. So the potential difference or the voltage between the plates can be defined as the work it takes to push a charge across the plates divided by the size of that charge. And so it'll be QED, which is the work done to move the charge across the plates, divided by the charge, Qs cancel out. So the potential difference is equal to E times D. You'll see later why we might need the potential difference. So going back to the definition of, of capacitance, capacitance is equal to the amount of charge you can load onto the capacitor divided by the potential difference you put across the plates. And so therefore, the potential difference across the plates can be written as Q divided by C. And since Q is defined like this in a physical sense for a physical capacitor, um, I'm not Q, but C, we, we replace this C by what the C is equal to, and we have the potential difference is equal to this right here. QD divided by epsilon sub naught times A. Now, the definition of the electric field from this equation right here can be written as the potential difference divided by the distance between the plates. 
We got the potential difference right here from this equation and knowing what the capacitance is of a real capacitor. Divide by D, notice the D's cancels out and the electric field cannot be expressed in terms of the charge on the plates divided by epsilon sub naught times the, or divided by the area of the plates. Now this is where we're going to pick up on how to apply this. We want, now want to get to know what this term is equal to. We want to take the partial derivative of the electric field divided by time and here we have the electric field right here. So since Q is not going to be constant if charge is flowing onto the, the plates, we can then realize we can take the partial derivative with respect to Q because that's going to be changing, which is going to be proportional to the change in the electric field. So we can say that the partial derivative uh, with respect to time of the electric field is therefore equal to the partial derivative with respect to time of Q divided by epsilon sub naught times A or divided by A because A is in the denominator. So of course epsilon sub naught and A they are constants they can be taken out and we take the partial derivative of the charge with respect to time so this is equal to 1 over epsilon sub naught times A times the partial derivative with respect to time of the charge and of course by definition Delta Q delta T is equal to the current flowing in or out of the capacitor. So this is equal to 1 over epsilon sub naught times A times the current, and I might as well put the current right up here. So times the current. Now notice that I divided by A, that should ring a bell. What is that equal to? By definition, A is the area that is equal to the current density. Because remember, that the current density by definition is equal to I divided by the area which is equal to I divided by pi r squared and so we can say that this here is equal to the current density so we can write this as the current density divided by epsilon sub naught. Alright, that is the definition of the changing of electric field with respect to time between capacitor plates and that can then be put back in here. If we do that we get the curl of V is equal to mu sub naught times the current density inside a region where there's current. So if we want to find the electric field there, uh, because there's a current wire there, we can do that as well. Or we can add to that this term, which is mu sub naught times epsilon sub naught times the change of the electric field divided by time, which would be the V field here. Even though there's no physical current there, it acts as if there's a current. And we can replace the partial derivative with respect to the perspective time of the E of the electric field by that, so we can write this as J over epsilon sub naught, and notice that the epsilon sub naught cancel out, and notice then we have the curl of the B field is equal to mu sub naught times the current density of a real current plus mu sub naught times the current density of what we call the displacement uh, uh, current, the density of the displacement current. And you can see that they're exactly the same in format. The only difference is that this is really equal to epsilon sub naught times the changing of the electric field with respect to time. Hopefully that will really give it a good understanding for you to realize that this is simply another form of this by taking that into consideration. For whoever figured that out, Maxwell and Ampere, they were pretty smart because that is pretty complicated stuff. And yet it's so elegant when you think about it. So when they looked at that equation, they were thinking about that. And that's what we mean by Maxwell's or Ampere's law or Maxwell's equation of Ampere's law in differential form.